Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Maggie Gallagher. I'm the chairman and co-founder of the National Organization for Marriage. Uh, our mission is protecting marriage is the union of husband and wife and the faith communities that sustain marriage. I want to, to um, present to you today an answer to a puzzle, which is why is it that the government is in the love business? We all value love, and we know love comes in many forms. The question is, why is there one particular kind of adult relationship that the government has chosen to get involved with? Let me tell you, it is something unusual about saying that the way we demonstrate how sacred an adult personal relationship with is, is to surround it with a bunch of government rules and laws. Right? That isn't really the way. Most of my most intimate adult relationships are virtually untouched by the law, and that's as it should be. So there is an answer to this puzzle about why of all the different kinds of relationships human beings have and value and consider sacred, this is the one adult relationship that government is involved with. <clears throat> Marriage, uh, and I would add that this is a, uh, that, that uh, the majority of courts in this country as well as the majority of people have repeatedly demonstrated that they do understand this fundamental truth, which is that unions of husbands and wives deserve their unique status because they really are different from other kinds of unions. These are the only unions which create new life, whether people are married or whether they're not married. But it is only when people enter into these unions that new life can be created and connected in love to their mother and father. This has always been understood, not only here in the state of Maryland and throughout the United States, but cross-culturally in virtually every known human society until the last 10 years. There you need to bring together male and female to make and raise the next generation. This is not the private purpose of marriage, marriage or the religious purpose of marriage necessarily. Right? This is uh, the uh, people marry for all kinds of reasons. This is the reason why a public and legal institution of marriage was in fact created. Because it is necessary to have an institution that directs and, and that embodies for young people the truth that children ought to have and deserve and have a right to and long for their mother and father. What, and I would say not just the majority of courts, including the High Court here in Maryland, recognized this as a reasonable purpose of marriage and rejected the idea that marriage equality requires recognizing same-sex unions as marriages. Uh, but dozens of other courts, not only here but abroad, I mean, just this year, the European Court of Human Rights, the French Supreme Court, uh, all recognize that there is no natural right to same-sex uh, marriage. Each of us have a right to live as, as we choose, I believe, including the gay people. Um, but none of us have a right to redefine marriage. Marriage is the union of husband and wife for a reason. So what happens when the government steps in and takes an institution that has deep roots, yes, in religious truth of various kinds, but also in just an obvious human nature, and says, no, we're gonna, we've got a new problem in our society, which is how do we demonstrate respect for gay people who are friends and neighbors and fellow citizens. Well, I know we're not just going to try to figure out some practical benefits. We're going to take this institution called marriage and we're going to redirect it towards this new problem of demonstrating respect to gay people, which is what you just heard about. The one big thing that happens is that the institution of marriage as a, as a civil matter gets cut off its, from its roots in the natural family. If two men or two women are marriage, then it is very clear that marriage has nothing to do with procreation. It has nothing to do with bringing mothers and fathers together. It becomes less clear why the government of Maryland is in the marriage business in the first place. And I think as time goes on, as we see this, if this institutional change takes place in the civil marriage, it's going to be harder and harder to answer basic questions. Why two? Why not close relatives? Why, uh, why government at all? Uh, because you will have cut off marriage from what is its genuine and truthful, with a truthful answer to that question. Marriage, civil marriage, makes sense. It makes sense to get the government in the marriage business to the extent that it's very important in protecting children. 
We know from social science research that for children created by acts of sexual passion, it is very important that parents be married. Very few, although many single mothers, and I was an unwed mother for 10 years, do a great job raising their children. It's much, much harder, and the children suffer more, and some of them are damaged, and the taxpayers have to step forward. Um, and uh, that, uh, conversely, when a man, man, the man and the woman who make the baby love each other and the baby too, that there's something distinctively important to the common good about making that possible. And so I would urge you to say this. Whatever we need to do to answer that new question of how we demonstrate respect to the gay, the gay friends and family members and neighbors, marriage as a civil institution is not rooted in hatred or animus towards anyone. It has its own unique dignity and purpose. And it is uh, not only not based in discrimination, marriage is not discriminatory, it has this shape and this content for a reason. And it would be unjust in uh, my belief, and I believe, I believe that it will turn out, if the wrong decision is made today, that the majority of people of Maryland will also agree that to make a marriage you need a husband and wife for a reason, and I request that you hopefully will vote to recommend retaining our understanding of marriage. Thank you.